Okay, so good morning everyone. Okay, I'm Vizia from Audit Department. I'm Vinci from Tax Department. So today we are going to share the introductions on capital statements. Now we will start our sharing. Have you heard about capital statement before? If yes, please put one and if no, please put two in the chat box. So uh, let us see how's the response in the chat box. So uh, have done, okay. So we received, okay. The response in one so okay from the response it seems like most of them have heard about capital statements but what is the capital statement actually capital statement is a statement showing the individual network which compromise the asset liability spending and income so the examples for assets are motor vehicles properties bank saving accounts investment and etc for liabilities, it may include term loan, higher purchase, credit card liabilities. For spending, is a living expenses like food, travel costs, early morning, entertainment, education costs, and so on. So for the last part, the income, normally is the reported income declared under Form B or Form BE. If there is any capital gain, such as dividend income, it should also be included under income section. Then, who should prepare for capital statement, company or individual? This is only for individuals to prepare. The purpose for preparing the capital statement is for LHDN to analyze if there is any underreported income for individual taxpayers. Therefore, taxpayer has to prepare the capital statement as their defense documents. The capital statement is prepared based on cash basis and not accrual basis. Everyone can understand. If yes, we will continue to the next part. So, does the capital statement need to include the spouse portion? Yes, the capital statement shall include the husband or wife portion, especially if there is jointly held assets like jointly bank account. Therefore, even if their income tax return form is reported separately, the capital statement information still needs to be included for the spouse. Oh, I see. So the document normally required are license and purchase agreement, bank statement, loan agreement, medical insurance expenses, donation, credit card statement, and so on. So generally, the documents are required to be kept for at least seven years. But it is also suggested to keep those important documents like sales and purchase agreements, loan agreements for more than seven years. It is advised to get the agreement documents and RPGT form from a lawyer instead of keeping at the lawyer firm. Even if there is no gain or loss in disposal of properties, it is also required to keep the RPGT form to prove the validity of the transaction. Any question for this part? If yes, you may raise your question in the chat box. We will answer the question after the sharing. So we start, uh, we continue to the next part. The main challenge faced to prepare a capital statement is no supporting document and memory loss. The taxpayer does not keep proper documentation and is unable to recall his memory of what happened in the past. So in this case, we should try to assist clients to recall or get the information by searching their social media like Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube or we have to purchase the CITOS report or checking the passport record to check their travel costs. So, who is the targeted person for capital statements from IRB? Normally, IRB will focus on the individual who have levy lifestyle. For example, IRB will look at the taxpayer social media like Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to detect the lifestyle of the taxpayer. So, for individuals, have overseas bank's account which launch funds transferring in or out of Malaysia or suddenly keep on spending or purchasing expensive assets, for example, jewelry, properties, will also be the targeted person. Besides that, for company director who has advice to company will also trigger IRB attention on his personal income status. So when should the taxpayer prepare the capital statement? So frankly speaking, the capital statement needs to be prepared within 30 days, 3 zero, from the date of letter under Section 81 from LHDN. 
There are two statements is required to be submitted, which are CP102, named as Statement of Personal and Living Expenses, and CP103, named as Complete Statements of All Properties and Its Related Liabilities. However, the IRB officer mentioned that it is a good practice to prepare the capital statement annually. Actually, the preparation of a capital statement is not difficult but tedious and time consuming. The most important for capital statement is to tally the saving and spending with the reported income. If the saving and spending is more than the reported income, it means that there is underreported income which may be subject to tax and additional penalty. The other way around, if the saving and spending is less than the reported income, means that there is understated expenses or undisclosed capital. So what is the consequences of failure to prepare a capital statement? The tax payable will be liable for not less than 200 and no more than 20,000 or to imprisonment for a term not more than six months or to both. So everyone can understand this part. Any question, please put in the chat box. Okay. So since now there is no further question, so the last part of our sharing is how to negotiate with RRB officer, which is also the important part in the course of our work. There are few techniques to communicate with RRB officer, such as to decide and understand your break even point before starting to negotiate or discuss the tax adjustment with the officer. This can make us have a win-win outcome in a tax negotiation. So when talking with officer, we shall not be too aggressive or confrontational speech and behavior. Listen passionately to the other side rather than talking over others or show off your technical knowledge. Before the interview, we should plan how we will structure our proposals to offer to the other person. The speaker also mentioned that the tax officer is normally busy, so if there is no news from them after submission, it does not mean that this is a good news. Therefore, we have to contact the officer politely and make sure whether they have received the document and stay in touch with them to get the updates. Also, we shall be sympathetic. Sorry, we shall be sympathetic towards them and it will put them in a position of feeling bad for letting things drag, which may turn out to be an occasional advantage in the future dealings. The most important thing when we receive the assessment raised by the officer is to pay first and argue later. Otherwise, if the tax is not paid before the appeal procedure, the taxpayer, the taxpayer have to pay 10% late payment penalty on the amount due. Okay, so here is all our sharing today. So if there is no further queries, thanks for your attendance and have a nice day. Uh, but could you please uh, turn on your camera as we need to take a picture for our sharing today. Thank you.